Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a feature that's been around for a while, but until recently has largely gone unnoticed by the forensics community. In fact, one of the main reasons it's gotten some much needed love is this KPMG article authored by Kevin Stokes. The feature, or more specifically, the log we're referring to is UAL. Now, if that term sounds familiar, this is not the unified audit log from Microsoft 365. In this case, UAL stands for User Access Logging. We'll do our best to summarize the information within the KPMG article and within this Microsoft doc to show you the value of this data and how it can benefit you, the forensic investigator. As in previous episodes, let's start with the facts, or as we call them here, the ARTA facts. And starting at the top, the first thing you need to know is that this feature is both present and enabled by default since server 2012. It collects user access and system related statistical data in near real time. Some examples of services and roles from which the data is collected include things like DNS, DHCP, IIS, which of course will be very important in many investigations, WSUS, and more. The data itself is stored within multiple .mdb files, which are actually ESE or Extensible Storage Engine databases. They'll be located in Windows, System32, Log Files, SUM, S-U-M, SystemIdentity.mdb, Current.mdb, and one or more files with a GUID-based name should exist in that path. SystemIdentity.mdb will track other UAL databases in use and contain some basic server configuration information. Current.mdb, by default, will contain data only for the past 24 hours. In addition to the current year, two years of historical data is kept in the other GUID-named databases. Now, the databases will be locked and in use when the system is running, so you'll need to use CAPE or some other utility that can provide raw disk access to acquire them. Database repair may be necessary if the collected files are in a dirty state. And lastly, Eric Zimmerman's SUM eCMD and Brian Moran's K-Strike can parse the artifact. All right, so now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's move over to the last section of this episode where we'll take a look at a live demo and see all of this in action. So we're looking at our Windows Server 2019 lab machine. At this point, we're ready to acquire the user access logging databases, which again are MDB files in ESE format. As we talked about though, these files are locked and in use, so we'll need to use a utility with raw disk access to acquire them. Typically, I would use CAPE with the log files target, but in this case, I'm going to use raw copy instead. And my testing using CAPE seemed to result in files that I could not then repair with ESE NT util. More on that in a bit though, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First off, let me show you the location that we discussed where we'll find these files. And again, that's Windows System32 log files sum. And these, in this case, three MDB files that we're after are right here. So there's the GUID named one and then current and system identity. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and pre-typed out the commands that we'll use to acquire these with raw copy because it is quite a bit. And you can see them right here. I'm using start forward slash wait to spawn a new command window and wait for the command to complete before moving on to the next one. If you paste this all at once, you'll have some issues with raw copy. So first off, we're calling raw copy 64 in this case, slash file name path is going to be the source and slash output path will be the destination where we want the files copied to. So you can see current for the first one, system identity for the second one, and then the GUID named one for the third one. So I'm gonna copy all of this and switch over to an administrative command prompt, as you can see right here. And I have raw copy 64.exe already in this tools miscellaneous directory, so we're good to go. All I'm going to do is paste this in, and as you can see, the first window popped open, now the second, and then in a couple of moments, we'll see the third window, there it is. And this should only take a second to copy these, in this case, to the administrator desktop, and it's done. So if we look at the desktop, there we go. Those are the three files. So now what? Well, now we need to copy these three files to our forensic analysis workstation so that we can then parse them. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, we're now on our Windows 10 Forensic Analysis box, and on the desktop, you'll notice I've created a folder called SUM, S-U-M. In it, I have placed those three MDB files that I copied over from the Server 2019 box that we were just on. So the data we want to parse is right there. The first utility we're going to look at that can do so is called SUM ECMD from Eric Zimmerman. I already have a Windows terminal open, and you'll notice I'm in the Tools Zimmerman directory, so let's just run some ECMD without any options to take a look at the available options. And I think you'll agree the usage is quite simple. We're going to specify dash D to point to the directory that would contain those MDB files that we want to parse. And then dash dash CSV will be the location where we would like the output to be stored. So let's give it a shot. Some ECMD.exe dash D. In this case, it's going to be users Davis RG desktop sum and then for dash dash csv let's just store the results on the desktop itself so users davis rg desktop and that's it a dash d option and a dash dash csv option so let's see what happens when we try to run this and as you can see we get an error as i previously alluded to we're going to need to repair the databases first and to do so, we're going to use the built-in Windows utility called ESCNTUTL.exe. In fact, it's the slash P parameter specifically that we're going to need in order to repair these databases. Ignore the one above it. It's just going to be slash P and then the database name. We're going to need to do that three times, once for each of those three dirty databases. So let's go ahead and change into the directory on the desktop where I've placed this, which again is sum. And let's go ahead and try to run this. Okay, so here we go. We're going to use slash P for current.mdb. And notice the dialog says you should only run repair on damaged or corrupted databases. So yes, I do accept the risk. I understand the warning. And I understand that it could potentially result in data loss. So I click OK there. And you'll notice it says that the operation completed successfully. So, so far so good. Let's run it against systemidentity.mdb and again, press OK. And then lastly, we're going to run it against the GUID named database. So it starts with the open brace there, as you can see. And we'll click OK one last time. And there we go. So in theory, we have repaired all three of these .mdb databases. And hopefully, we'll now have some success. Notice that all three of them are right there and they have the current time uh, as of this recording, 9.22 a.m. So that just completed and modified those files, as you can see. All right, so let's just repeat the same command we did last time, the sum ECMD command, and see if we have different results this time. So there it is, and I'll just press enter. And hey, check it out. It looks like we've got some data. There are our export totals, and it shows you that it found a certain number of each type of record. Not a super busy box, obviously. It's just a server 2019 lab machine that hasn't been used very much, but that's not the point. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this would work. All right, so here are all of these files. In this case, seven different output files. I'm going to be using Timeline Explorer to briefly show you this data. So I'm not going to make you wait on me to open each of these seven files into different tabs in Timeline Explorer. Let's go ahead and speed that up and come back with them all open and take a look at the results. And here we are with all seven of the CSV files opened in tabs within Timeline Explorer. Now, of course, you could certainly use Excel to do this review, not that big of a deal, but I'm in the habit of using Timeline Explorer for any kind of review of forensic data in CSV format. I just find it to be much easier and more powerful. So you're looking at clients output. You can see role description, authenticated username, total accesses, the insert date and last access date, which is basically the first and last dates of activity, IP address related information, and some various other information within those column headers. Specifically, the last one, source file, will show you the database from which the data was obtained. But it's the client's detailed output that's perhaps most interesting, at least in this example. We have a count, a day number, a role GUID, role description, a username, as you can see here, both domain users and computer accounts in this case, the total number of accesses for each of those, the insert date and last access date, which again is the first and last dates of activity for those users, IP address related information, which will be extremely valuable, 
and some various other information, again, ending with source file, which will show you the source from which that information was obtained. So very, very useful information in client's detailed output. In this one, in the DNS info output, you can see just a little bit of information because in my lab, I'm not really running DNS services. Nothing's really configured here, but that could be very valuable. Under role access output, again, just the various roles configured on the server. Nothing super exciting, but could be useful. Here we have some additional information with regards to other databases that are active on the system. This is the GUID named database, and there could be potentially two of these, remember, because of two years of historical data. Okay, next up, we also have some other role related information here showing role GUID and role names that were active on the server. And then lastly, we also have the OS major and minor and build numbers for this particular Windows Server operating system. So quite a bit of useful information. But let me talk to you for a second about this because I realize this is, you know, fairly boring and a fairly small amount of data in this example. Because again, this is a lab machine. This machine's only been up and running for a couple of weeks. It's just a plain vanilla server 2019 install. Nothing exciting. But I promise you, I have personally used this data in real life on investigations and on a real box where you would have hundreds or even thousands of users, there can be a gold mine of data here. Consider also the implications of anti-forensics, right? Attackers will very often clear or fiddle with or delete event logs. And unfortunately, not all customers are centrally collecting those event logs as we might like. In fact, they're also probably not collecting all of the event IDs we would like. So think of this as something that could potentially fill in the gap on Windows Server 2012 and later server-based operating systems. You have a treasure trove of data that is potentially available to you within these user access logging databases. So I hope you can see how useful this would be. All right, we're not quite done. One last thing I wanna show you is another utility that we can use to parse the databases. So let's take a quick look at that and then wrap this up. And you're looking at the GitHub repo for Case Strike by Brian Moran. This is a Python script which can also be used to parse these MDB databases and extract the information within. It's extremely easy to use as you're about to see. You just take the Python script, point it at the database, and the information will be written to standard out but can easily be redirected to a file. So let's use the same three databases and take a look at how to parse them with this. I fired up WSL and you'll notice we're in the tools miscellaneous directory. I've already pulled down a copy of kstrike.py from the official GitHub repo that we just looked at and you can see it right here. Luckily, this is a Python 3 script, so we don't have to worry about any weird Python 2 shenanigans and trying to get it to work with Ubuntu 20.04. If I go ahead and run it without any options, you'll notice we get the help screen. I do want to call your attention to the fact that the output is double pipe delimited. More on that in just a moment. The usage couldn't be more simple. It's just kstrike.py space the name of the database. We can optionally use that greater than to redirect the output from standard out into a file. Now you might want to do this because you could then open it in Excel and use the text to columns feature, specifying the double pipe delimiter and convert those into columns where you could then filter and sort the data to your heart's content. For our example though, we're just going to display it on screen so you can get a quick view of how it looks. So let's go ahead and run this against current.mdb. And again, it's in the same location. We're using the same exact databases that we used with some eCMD. So I'll go ahead and specify that path and press enter. And it shouldn't take but just a second. And in fact, it literally took one second and it processed 13 records. You can see number 13 here, 12 here, 11 here, so on and so forth. But the same information that we were looking at within Timeline Explorer in those CSV output files can be seen here. Notice we see usernames, IP addresses. Again, it's the same data, just displayed in a different format. So, so far, so good. Now, unfortunately, with systemidentity.mdb, I do get an error here. And honestly, I haven't had time to troubleshoot this. It's probably something simple, but I haven't looked at the Python code to determine why we're getting this key error with systemidentity.mdb. But let's go ahead and press on. If I do find a solution for this, I'll pin it in the comments of this particular episode. 
And then here, let's go ahead and do the last database, which is the GUID named one. And this process is just fine. All three records here, and you can see number three right here, and then two right here, and then one right here. The column header is just above that, and there are all of the fields. Specifically, this is the DNS related information, which on this box is admittedly very sparse because it didn't really have anything configured. But that's it, that's how you use K-Strike. In fact, I would argue that it's even easier to use than some ECMD. So now you have two awesome utilities at your disposal to be able to process this sum data, or more specifically, the user access logging databases. All right, so let's do a quick recap here. We learned that user access logging, or UAL, is enabled by default and is a feature included in Windows Server 2012 and later. We learned that in the case of anti-forensics, this could be a very valuable source of data that could provide us with additional information that we may not have access to otherwise. And we saw that there are two different utilities, some ECMD and K-Strike, which can easily parse the data for us and output it so that we can take a look at basically user-related activity on the box, including IP addresses, which could be extremely valuable. So that wraps it up. And as always, I would like to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.